You awake, as if from a dream. You are lying in a beautiful field. The sky is blue and cloudless. You feel completely content. Um, hello everyone, this is Actoloid3, uh, putting this up as a video response on Raukao's video for Euphoria, showing the two endings and how to get them. I will also be reading the text for, uh, basically this is, this should act as an all-purpose go-to video for, uh, everyone that wants to see how the game ends but doesn't want to play through it themselves. Uh, there's this rabbit here. You notice a cute bunny. The bunny stares at you. It looks like she, he wants to tell you something. You pet the bunny. Um, you see the key floating up there. Uh, if you saw Rakka's video, you would already know about this much. There's f invisible blocks here. You just gotta hit the right side of the screen, jump, go left, and you can work your way up to the key here. You pick up a key. There's a noise that sounds like something has moved. You can jump down by going straight left, and that opened up basically a hole in the floor here. That'll let you go down below, where you will start to see various things like a goblin to the left, a slug to the right. Uh, damn it! I was, I'm gonna go talk to the slug. Talking to the slug is not mandatory. Uh, it tells you something that's important to completing the game, but if you already know it, you don't need to actually talk to him. There is a slug. It opens its mouth to talk. Who the hell are you? It says. Get out of my house. You back away slowly. As you back away, you notice it is wearing a medallion around its neck. The medallion reads, Rebecca. And that's really all that that slug does, to my knowledge. And that's, you just gotta know the name Rebecca. If you go down here, there's a uh, while to go. Still going. There we are. There's a little girl down here. Uh, you come across a young girl. You notice she is crying. You don't know what to say. You comfort her. She sniffles. She is feeling better. I like you, she says. She gives you a flower. Alright. Now, uh... I don't know exactly what triggers the second ending, but I know how to do it I just don't know what exactly has to be done as far as getting it goes like I don't know what exactly triggers it I know that if you go far enough it'll be triggered so uh, and I'm too lazy to continue experimenting with this game until I figure that out because it took a while to figure out the second ending and I only got that because the creator gave me a tip you see a dozen of gnome-like creatures milling about they're incredibly ugly their faces are covered with snot and blood you stop one and ask who they are. He sh or she he stares back at you silently. You notice that her slash his eyes have no pupils. You let the gnome like creature go. He runs away. Alright, now here's, I believe, where Rauko got stuck. Uh, there's an invisible block right here. That lets you, or not invisible, but a falsely visible, I guess. It's a fake block. And there's one here also, and there's, alright, there's one right here. Which isn't important yet. And there's also one right here. Uh, they're both right above the block that juts out. You see a skeleton down here. There is a skeleton. The skeleton winks at you. How can a skeleton wink, you think to yourself? Was it my imagination? You give yourself a little shake. No, think realistically, you tell yourself. You can't wink, you say to the skeleton. You don't even have eyes. The skeleton looks hurt. There's a small noise. It sounds like something has moved. Now, once you do that, you have to navigate back. Like, there's a bit of walking back and forth in this. I recommend talking to that girl right off the bat. But, uh, I guess I just realized that by talking to that girl right off the bat, there is one thing it takes that I won't, that you guys are going to have to miss out on. But I can just sort of give the gist of it when that comes up. Because at one point, when you talk to someone... A different window, or like different text shows up whether or not you have the flower. Uh, if you don't have the flower, it just tells you some text. You have to actually have the flower to get by, and that gives an alternate text that shows what happens once you use the flower. Um, talking about skeleton, open up the pathway up here that lets you go up to this goblin. And the game always starts lagging for some reason right around there. I don't know what it is. 
Maybe. My computer is just a piece of crap. I don't know. You notice a strange goblin controlling the bunny through a series of complicated levers. Also, this one rope. He is smoking a cigarette. The air smells the decay. Your eyes begin to water. As he opens his mouth and puts in his cigarette, a worm dribbles down his chin. He turns to speak. You now notice that his mouth is filled with worms. Pretty good, huh? He says. Pretty damn good for a goblin. He raises his cigarette again, which has become a carrot. You are overcome by an irrational sensation of tremendous guilt. I don't know what the like what that's all about. I know that once you talk to him, you feel guilty. Which is, I guess, sort of important because you need to do that to progress. Now, you have to navigate all the way back down again. So, bear with me. There's a lot of walking here and I don't, uh, my computer does not like to cooperate with me enough to actually edit out these segments. So, I'm sorry, but you're just gonna, gonna kinda have to deal with it. Oops. So, you go back and talk to the skeleton again. The skeleton looks at you sadly. Your guilt becomes overwhelming. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. Can you forgive me? You say. The skeleton smiles. You realize it has been smiling all along. There is a noise. It sounds like something has moved. And then a block just right over there to the left opens up. Which is what that leftward pit is for. There's a little, so I'm not, like, I wouldn't call this a glitch, but, uh, like, your hitbox and your character, like, your arms jut out to the side a bit. Those arms are also, like, it wraps perfectly around your hitbox, so you can, like, grab onto corners if you get your arms to line up properly with them, which allows you to do a bit of a sequence break in a moment here. And I'm lagging again. Wow. Like, this fall is kind of annoying enough as is, but it's even worse when the computer starts running slowly. Come on. I'm sorry. Right there's a trampoline. If you touch it, it'll basically skyrocket you back up that gap there. Uh, here's the sequence break I was talking about, though. It's like you're not supposed to be able to jump over this, but you can jump high enough that your arm can clip onto it, and then you can jump over and go down below. Um, if you do that, you won't be able to come back up. Now, this is the person with the... Uh, flower that I was talking about where if you talk to them before you get the flower it'll basically tell you that this is like an incredibly beautiful fairy and you wish you had a way of like presenting your love and if you have the flower you approach the fairy with the flower in your hand she turns to you and smiles radiantly you hold the flower out in front of you take it you say as a token of my love she reaches out to take the flower, but as she does so, her skin begins to melt off her outstretched hand. Her skin begins to bubble. She screams in agony. She covers her face and falls to the ground. You are horrified. You cannot bear to witness the destruction of her beauty. She is now writhing on the ground. Her skin has turned black. You panic and crush her head with your foot. The screaming stops. You look down and see a pool of blood and brains. The rest of her body has vanished. There is a noise. It sounds like something has moved. That's kind of disturbing. Yeah. Now you continue your way downward. Uh, parts like this are just sort of monotonous, especially when you have to maneuver back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But from this point forward, I should be able to just continue straight downwards. There's an old man here. You see an old man wandering among ruins. Can I help you find your way? You ask. The old man says, I am looking for my daughter. Have you seen her? The old man shakes his head slowly from side to side. She is young and beautiful, as was her mother. I abandoned her, but now I need to tell her I'm sorry. I need to tell her to tell her. I have no idea what that man, like, talking to him accomplishes. Uh, here's a bit of a maze. Uh, it's pretty simple. This is the path. I wonder if that maze is supposed to spell something, because it looks like there's an E going on there to the left. But I don't really make out much more than that. Interesting. Continue downwards. Like, with how floaty your character is, it takes a while to actually fall down these. There should be another trampoline there to the left that, uh, 
yeah, or to the right, not to the left, that you could use if you need to go back up. You approach a figure robed in black. He speaks in a voice as deep as time. There is a way forward, he says, but you have never, but you never answered my question. Who was the lady of the underworld? The answer here is the medallion on the slug's neck, which is Rebecca in full caps. It cannot like be a capital R in the lowercase. It's got to be in full caps. The figure nods. Yes, she was Rebecca, and you killed her. The figure throws off its black robe and vanishes instantly. And then this pathway opens. And now, one of the longest, like, downwards moving segments. But luckily, also the final one. So this just kind of takes a while. Uh, there's a bit of a, uh, I guess a bug, I guess, or uh, uh, opening in the coding, where when you're going down this segment, you can see the walls to your left and right that you can't pass through. Uh, the gaps above them, there is no, like, wall there. So if you could actually get on top of them, you can go out of the map and potentially get stuck out there and have to restart the game. Uh, I don't know how to get past these ones up here, but I know that later on down is fairly easy. Uh, the game's starting to lag again, that's nice. Right over here, actually. Uh, if you climb all the way up this, you can just jump and see right here where I'm standing. There's no wall here, so if I want to, I could go right and go off the screen. But I am like at the very ending of the game, and doing that now would require me to play through all of this again, just to show off the very ending. So I will respectfully have to not do that. But, now we just kind of wait. It gets darker and darker as you descend into the depths. I'm almost at the bottom. Eventually I'll actually stop right about now. Yeah, right there. Because uh, there's walls here at the very bottom that you can't see. And I landed on top of them. But you get to the bottom of this pit. And there's nothing you can do down here. There's just walls on both sides except for interact with this. You see a jukebox. It is covered in dust but appears to be working. You search in your pockets for a coin. You find one coin. As you look at the coin in your hand, something catches your eye. The face on the coin is familiar. You squint. Your vision is blurry. You cannot make out whose face is on the coin. You put the coin into the jukebox. It springs to life immediately. You select your favorite song, the song your mother used to sing to you as a child. You feel lightheaded. Strange thoughts occur to you. Everything is growing dark. You remember. And then it'll just basically fade to black. You can keep on talking to the jukebox over and over again if you want to. And that was the first thing to Euphoria. Euphoria. I'm going to restart this now. And show you guys the second ending here. Luckily, I don't believe this takes as much time. I have to wait on the intro to start, but I'll try to go through this as fast as possible so as to not waste your time. Uh, I'll try to leave a uh, annotation around now that will tell you the time that you need to go to to just see the second ending. Because everything up to it is stuff that you've already seen if you watch the first ending. So, lag, 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 this is nice. At this point, I guess there's not really much need for commentary. <sighs> oh, at least it stopped lagging. Come on down. This is one of the most annoying parts. Having to keep on going. And then, like, once you talk to the girl, you have to go all the way back. I remember seeing a comment on Raukow's video saying that, uh, 
they, that some like one person said that they would play through to get both endings, but the fact that you advance through the text and also close out of the game using the escape key kind of ruins it. But that's well, that is kind of true. But you can also advance the text with the space bar, which is what I use, or the enter key. And I'm lagging again. Wow. My computer actually does feel like my computer started to overheat a bit. That's pleasant. Come on. I'm assuming that most people will just click the annotation that I'll give and skip straight to the ending. And I'm hoping so, because I don't really want to keep on commentating past this point, especially because I'm not really commentating much. And there is no in-game audio, in case you were curious, if you're still actually watching at this point. Uh, even if there was in-game audio, I don't think I'd be picking it up because Hypercam's a prick like that, but... Yeah, it's it's dead silent even to me, and just kind of awkward. I think the only sound that you hear throughout the entire game is uh, when you talk to the black figure near the bottom of the pit and say Rebecca or just hit enter on that window it makes like a default window sound that happens when you I'm not sure exactly what triggers it actually off the top of my head god damn this game it, like this game doesn't even seem to be very intensive I don't know why it's going so slow like when I did the ending for I love my wife this did not happen Oh, so I don't remember lagging like this, and that seemed worse. Come on. Talk to the goblin, we come over, run with guild. Go all the way back down to the skeleton. But yeah, like, the second ending, I would never have figured it out if it wasn't for that hint, and I'd, because, just because of how long it takes to navigate around this game, it, like, it's kind of monotonous. But, I think I played through and got the first ending, like, at least ten times, trying to figure out what the second ending was. Because I couldn't tell like what I needed to do for the second ending. It was like so vague. So I assumed that it would require me to go to the bottom of the pit every time. So I kept on doing that. And all that ever happened was a standard jukebox ending. I never really thought to do what you need to do here. So I need to get out of here for one thing. And go back down. This is only even worse when the game starts running slow. There we go, it's picking back up. Alright, I believe that this is the farthest I need to go, is to kill the fairy again. And that should be all it takes to get to the second ending. Well, actually, okay, I'm just f for safety. Safety reasons, or assurance. Because when I did a test run before this recording, I went one step further and I talked to the old man before I did this. I don't know if you have to talk to the old man or kill the fairy first, but I know that if all you do is talk to the goblin, it doesn't trigger. I don't know if it might have been at the skeleton, actually. But the old man isn't too far down this pit, so... You'll just have to kind of bear with me, because the game's running slow again. It's just lagging on and off. I think it's mostly lagging as frequently because I'm running Hypercam at the same time. Because, it, like, even when I previously ran the game, 
without recording. It was still lagging, but it wasn't lagging this bad, or this frequently. So, no, I just got to mess up jumps. And work on my way all the way up to the top, and then the ending will happen. And it'll be resolved. Because if you look at the instructions, it says, uh, upon completion of the application will exit automatically, there are two possible endings. So if there's a third possible ending, that would be a direct lie from the game. One might even call it a facade. Yeah, actually, I don't think a facade, the term facade really fits into that context properly. I don't really know. Lag. Hit the trampoline. Takes you right back up. Alright, god damn it. Now I have to go all the way back down because I stopped myself early. This is really just like a lot of moving around for the second ending because the second ending is pretty lackluster. Go back up. And. Uh, More navigating. Luckily, this is the last of it. I hope this video doesn't end up being too long. I might be like forced to cut out parts. Come on. Well, I guess actually I can upload videos longer than just 15 minutes now. More and more lag. This is just great. Haven't seen the color green up here in a while. I'm guessing the entire concept of the facade behind this game is how it starts off and like... Whoops. Just like like lush green cloudless blue sky everything looks so nice and then you sort of like descend into hell and crush a fairy's head with your foot and are accused of killing Rebecca who I assume is the fairy alright here is the second ending uh, the annotation will lead you to this point I assume uh, basically for the people that didn't follow through on the video I did the same thing that I did in the first ending, except uh, when I talked to the old man, I stopped and came up. I don't know if the old man is the trigger, or if killing the fairy is the trigger, or if talking to the skeleton a second time is the trigger, but I'm sure it's one of those three things. Then you come back up here and talk to the bunny. Would you like to be a bunny? You think about it for a moment. Then you realize that life would be easier as a bunny. The bunny smiles this mysterious smile, and you transform into a bunny, and then the game just fades out. Alright, so uh, thanks for watching everyone, uh, for the people that do watch, and I'll see you all next time.